Hello and welcome along to another episode of this FM20 story, the head coach with me, Daniel. Our journeyman story, combined with the director of Football Challenge, making every step along the way very difficult, as we have no say in transfer staffing or contracts. All the focus is on the pitch, whether that be the training one or the match one, as we try to get the very best out of the players we're given, and I hope we can rely on the coaches that are picked for us. It's season one, episode four, and today we're back on the screen of Reese Kavanagh. We've got a big game against Hereford, as promised. One of the sides trying to make their way back up the leagues. And Reese Kavanagh has been in brilliant form for us. Having returned from long-term injury a month or so ago, he's now got nine goals in 12 games for the club. You can see in his progress report on the bottom right of the screen, his ability's now back to where it was before the injury. And he's banging in goals for fun and starting to improve. And we really don't know where we'd be without him. We're also on this screen to avoid any spoilers, of course, and to say a massive thank you to everyone who's followed the series so far. If you've missed any of the first three episodes, then please do click back on the eye above to catch up. If you're up to date and enjoying the series, then please do put a thumbs up on the video. It really does make a difference, and if you're looking forward to daily FM20 content from this series and our Dorking Wanderer story, then please subscribe to the channel. There'll be a video every day at half four. But we can't hold it up any longer. Of course, Reese Cavan has been in brilliant form, but that doesn't necessarily translate to the team, although thankfully on this occasion it has. In last year's head coach story, we had a really dodgy start, and I know it made it entertaining seeing us get sacked and move between clubs, but of course we always want to do well, and on this occasion, thankfully, we've managed to do so. So we've got the side up to 13th place, now 12 points clear of relegation, and we're actually closer to the playoffs, which is a remarkable achievement, and I'm really hoping we'll be able to sustain that. Of course, our objective was to avoid a relegation battle, and if we can do that, we've done what we need to, but we'd love to be comfortable in mid-table, just to try and exceed expectations, and maybe get a little bit of attention from higher up. So we're 13th in the league, joint 12th with Boston United, and today we play Hereford, who are up in 11th, and know we can go level on points with them if we win. They've got a really good experienced team, but a few of those are injured, so all of the names injured there I recognise. That shows just what a reputable side they've got, and how difficult this test is going to be today. So Reese Kavanagh, who's only been here for three months and injured for six weeks of that, is now the top scorer at the club this season. We've got Marcus Kelly with a high average rating, though that's still below a seven overall. Not quite sure why that's not Kavanagh, actually, as his is well into the sevens. We've got Mikkel with five assists, he's doing well on both flanks, and a few yellow cards getting picked up too but generally things are going really well here so let's go and look at the results that have got us there so you were with me last as we played Gloucester away in the league, a one-all draw with a pretty depleted side, and we followed it up with the same result away at Farsley Celtic as we played a backup team in the FA Trophy. Luke Graham the centre-half and coach with a goal in the first half, unfortunately we just couldn't hold on though, and then we lost 1-0 at home in the replay, again resting the majority of the team. Then at home to Telford in the following game, unfortunately we lost yet again, nimbly with a consolation on the hour mark, but we just weren't able to get that equaliser, and that means our resting of the team in the FA Trophy didn't quite pay off and it was even worse after that as we fell to 2-1-0 defeats at the start of December. So firstly against Darlington away from home, a pretty late second half goal in that one and then a first half goal away at Chester, they managed to win the game pretty comfortably. After that we did have a chat to the lads, tried to get a bit out of them over the Christmas period and our squad really did well in this instance, getting three results in four days and putting us back towards the top half of the league. So at home to Gateshead first, Kavanagh with a break back from injury and you can tell when he returned to form and fitness as it just made a revelation to our form on the pitch. A brace there including a late winner followed by a 1-0 win at Blythe. I guess you know who scored the winner already and then one all away at Curzon Ashton. Guess who with the equaliser and then at home this month against Geisley and Spennymore. 2-1 victories on both occasions. So at home to Geisley you can see who got both goals. We fell behind early on but Kavanagh again with a very late winner and then in the last game against Spennymore he didn't get a goal for once, but Pugh and Nimely with the goals as we fell behind early on again but managed to come back and win the game. So into this one against Hereford, we're unbeaten in five with four victories. We've got Kavanagh fit and Nimely's ended his goal drought, so I'm really confident for what we can achieve. But of course, in the past when I've been in that state, we have then gone on and lost a game, so I'm not going to get too excited just yet. I'm going to go and quickly show you the transfers as there was one little bit of news. Our director of football's trying to bring in a centre-half. I don't know a great deal about him, so we're not going to go and look at him until he 
he comes into the club. Hopefully it'll then be a pleasant surprise. But in terms of our history, just one in and one out. Like for like replacements. Paul White, the backup keeper, has gone to Dartford for two grand. He was unhappy and complaining. He was causing a bit of problems in the dressing room, to be honest. So that's probably why the director of football sold him. He's gone off to Dartford in the National League South. And he's now the first choice keeper down there. So 250 quid a week off the wage bill. £1,800 in transfer fee. And he's replaced him with Lewis Landers on Christmas Eve on £150 a week, a young goalkeeper with a little bit of potential, and for someone who's not going to be used that often, I think that's a pretty good exchange. He can play naturally as a sweeper keeper or a goalkeeper, though he's unlikely to ever make an appearance in the league. It's only going to be if we get an injury to him or when he goes on international duty in March. So a good way to save money, and by the looks of it, that extra 100 quid a week's going towards that centre-back, so if he's a good player and can replace Luke Graham, then we're certainly going to have no complaints about the change. But with that done, we want to go and get into the match. It's a big one between two sides coming back from the lower levels. Kettering, of course, in the National League around the time Luton got relegated to there. The late 2000s being that sort of era. And then Hereford, of course, dropped from League 2 due to financial troubles. And they're now on their way back up. But they've got stuck in the National League North due to some managerial issues. They sacked the manager who had helped them get back through the leagues. And unfortunately, they've then gone for a head of football style. And it's not really worked out for them. They're languishing in mid-table here. So hopefully we'll be able to get another good result today. Both teams in strong form though, recovering after poor starts to the season and I've got another new manager in charge who I recognise from Scunthorpe United. I've got to go and check that out to make sure I'm right. He was the manager there back in 2018. So let's go and get into the team selection, see who we pick for this game today. As it looks like Latimer Park will have over a thousand people in, I think that's our highest attendance for a while. We've made just one change to the starting lineup from normal. Richens has displaced Kennedy in central midfield. He's the best player we've got in central midfield is Kennedy, but he just doesn't really fit into the tactical shape, and I don't want to change it while we're doing well, so Richens is going to play in that ball winning position. We've got Vidal back in for Storer at right back, who's been struggling in recent weeks, a little unhappy due to being transfer listed, so as a result we do have to manage him quite carefully. Again we've got a small squad, so there's not too much we can do. The only other change from the last episode being O'Connor dropping out for Kavanagh. The reasons Kavanagh are in the team is clear, he's our best player and he's scoring goals for fun, and I'd very much like to hope he'll do the same today, though it does give us a few extra options on the bench. So we've got Manny Adem in goal, the four-star keeper, Scarlett and Vidal the fullbacks, Liam Williams joined by Luke Graham at centre-half, though that could of course change after this game. If that low knee comes in and is a decent player, he'll likely displace our coach. It means we'll have someone to talk to on the sideline, a coach to discuss tactics with, as Luke Graham would then be named among the substitutes, and he can do the sort of thing that Alan Sheehan did at Luton last year. He was on the sub, so he's going and warming up down the touchline, and then talking to all the players as he went along and delivering instructions to them too. So it can work really well that and I'm hoping we can do the same. We've got Mikkel and Kelly on the wings with Pugh and Richens in the middle. Pugh improving as well. We'll probably look at him in the next episode. And then Nimely joined by Kavanagh up front. Both of them back in goal scoring form. We've got a few game changers like Kennedy and O'Connor on the bench. But let's get into the game and hope the first 11 can do the job and put us level on points with today's opponents Hereford. Well it's a 4-3-3 for the away side and they've still got a pretty decent side there. Jordan Nicholson on the left wing. Kane Felix on the right is pretty quick. And at left back they've got Maskell. He was playing for Dulwich Hamlet was he in another series. I'm sure with Dorkin Wonder as he was playing there. And he caused us a world of trouble. So let's go and talk to the lads and encourage them. They've been in good form so they should be fairly confident. And as we get into the first half we'll be hoping for a strong performance. Let's hear a kick off with the first half. It's Bird at centre half with a long ball forward. Suggests they might be going direct to their big striker. It looked like he was going up for the aerial battle straight away and even on this match engine he looks pretty big. It's the first episode I'm recording since the full game came out so hopefully you'll see changes to the match engine too and fingers crossed it won't affect our tactic negatively just as it did with Dorkin Wanderers. The first chance is Kelly with a free kick 30 yards out. It was always going wide but it's good to see us causing a threat. 20 minutes gone, we've got a throw on the right hand side with Vidal, trying to find Mikel in the middle there, but the poor right back with a terrible throw in, and he's given away the chance for a counter attack. Nicholson on the left wing, it's certainly where their threat is, the two wingers are brilliant for Hereford, but Nicholson tries to go solo and his shot was wayward and wide, and thankfully we survived with a quarter of the game gone. Been a pretty even game so far, although we're back for a Hereford corner now, it remains nil-nil and I hope so after this highlight, can we get the corner away? Graham heads it away as far as Kavanagh, drops down for Mooney and 
no Owen Evans, unmarked, and he reacts first to put it in, and unfortunately we trail at home. Camera shy again, we've given away the lead, and we're going to push up to a positive mentality. Demand a bit more from the lads, get some confidence in them, and hopefully we'll be able to get level before the break. 10 minutes to half time, it's a free kick for Hereford, here then comes and claims it brilliantly, great goalkeeping and he holds it too, and hopefully he can now spring a counter attack. Long kick forward towards the centre forward, on the side of Kavanagh rather than the target man, and Kane brings it down in midfield for Hereford, long over the top for Mooney, slots it to the side of the keeper, but he then saves it, although the flag then goes up for offside, but the goalkeeper wasn't to know it. 5 to the break, Hereford just about on top, and probably deservedly lead 1-0. Well, we trail at the break, they've not been a good performance, and again on extended highlights, not much to see. We've been far more cagey in this series than we have with Dorkin, where we're playing really free-flowing attacking football. Here, we're just not able to get going with Kettering, though we have been picking up narrow victories. You've seen all the games we've won, none of them have won more than a goal, I don't think, so we're going to tell the lads we're disappointed, and hope we can respond in the second half. You've seen in the schedule that we've come from behind in almost every game in those ones we've won. Unfortunately, we did normally equalise before the break, though, so hopefully we'll be able to respond in this one. It's out to Kelly on the left as we come forward straight away, win the corner off a deflected cross, and if we can get an early equaliser, I'll fancy my chances again. We know these lads will never give up. They've got great spirit and character, and they've come back a number of times, and as the header's clearing the corner away, Mika will pick it up on the right. Ball in towards Kavanagh, who heads away, to the edge of the box towards Luke Graham. Richens picks it up 30 yards out, and he finds Graham again the centre half. Coming back from the corner, he didn't really know what to do with it, so in the the highlights finished. Unfortunately, we didn't cause any further threat. It's Hereford on the right-hand side. Mooney being brilliant up front. Holds it up and then gets through as well. And we missed it for Felix, who shoots just over. Missed interception from Kelly nearly cost us. Been a bit of a frantic game in terms of the highlights. Not too many of them, but all of the chances have come from little mistakes. An hour gone, we've got to think about changes. Reese Kavanagh's having an awful game. But you know I've not got the mental strength to take him off, so we're going to go for Richards instead. In fact, we're going to take both central midfielders off. McGrath's going to go in as the ball winner. Kennedy will drop to his preferred central midfield row on defend and will go a bit more attacking moving forward. Storer on the right back area is going to come on for Vidal. He's had a pretty average game too and we'll get back into it and go more attacking if need be. With 20 to go we want to try and chase the game. Well, we've asked the lads to show some passion and we're back for an attacking throw-in now. Again, the ball's been cleared away. Though Kennedy switches to Meek and he's got acres of space into Nimely who shoots. It was an awful effort, but it deflected in. The keeper had already gone down to his right and it dribbled down to his left-hand side. We're level with 15 to go and we've got a chance to get a comeback victory again. What a brilliant effort from the lads. They've not been great, but the spirit's brilliant. A cross into the box from Hereford, though. We've got to be careful at that end. Kavanagh probably should have reacted quicker there. As Elliot pumps it back in, Felix in one on one, he slots it in the corner, oh but he's offside, what a fantastic bit of news that is, I thought we'd just lost the game there, we've got to try and keep this unbeaten record, even if it does end up being a draw, just to make sure that we don't have a loss to our name, we'll keep the morale high amongst the lads, we've got five minutes left to try and nick a winner, but I'd be quite happy with one all from a defeat in position, his store on the right hand side with a throw in though, Nimely holds it up for Meekle, a poor pass and in the end he's challenged, he left it in a 50 50 position. Meekle not willing to put everything into the challenge. The centre half did. As Graham heads the long ball forward away, they've really been quite direct in this game. We've got a long ball ourselves though, which is headed away. Only as far as Pollock in the middle. He finds Owen Evans as that extra man's telling. They really are dominating those central areas. Mooney skins Graham. He's in one on one. Shoots into the side netting. Not 100% sure about Edem's position in there, but it did the trick and we still stay level. Just one minute of stoppage time to go and it's Hereford coming forward again. Long ball up to Mooney up front. He's been brilliant all game. He's dominated the match and now they're in on that right hand side. Ash crossing it in. Mooney shoots and scores. A 93rd minute defeat. That is absolutely awful defending. Where was the fullback storer? It shows just how weak we are at right back. I think about 50% of our goals have come from crosses on that left hand side. We just haven't got any fullbacks who can defend at right back and it's costing us so many points. We've got Kennedy to Scars, one more chance to equalise, up to Stora the right back, falls for Kavanagh on the edge who doesn't shoot, back to Kelly who goes for the shot, but it's deflected away as far as Scars. Reese Kavanagh has been awful and that's why we've lost the game, we're reliant on him, we're a one man team and unfortunately we fall to a late defeat. 
That is part of the problem with the confidence bought from an unbeaten run. We still stayed on positive trying to win the game, and that's ended up costing us a defeat there. We could have maybe nicked a point in that match. We're going to tell the lads we're disappointed. We need them to respond. Really not in our usual mould, that. But you can tell how important Kavanagh is there. When he has an off day, we really struggle. Goisley have won as well, so we've just got nine points to the relegation zone again, and suddenly we can start to worry a little bit about finishing above the bottom two. But overall, things are going okay. I know we said they were going well at the start of the episode compared to FM19. Don't forget at this stage of last year's head coach series, we were just about getting sacked after an FA Cup tie. And we were much earlier in the season than this, so I'm not too devastated by where we stand. Let's see what the media said about the game. We fall to a late defeat. And after five unbeaten matches, unfortunately the run ends. And you can see at the bottom there what the problem is. We've only scored 30 goals in 28 games, and Kavan has got at least 10 of them already. So we're just inside the bottom half, but Hereford extend that lead to six points. Now we're only nine away from the relegation zone. We've got to make sure we look down and get the job done. We're away to Leamington next weekend, so a really important game for us. They're in 18th and embroiled in the relegation battle. We don't want to let them get any closer to us, and more importantly, any further away from the bottom two. I'm just looking after that. We've then got Bradford Park Avenue in 20th away from home. So we've got all the winnable games coming up. And then Kingsling at home are in sixth place. That one will be slightly more tricky. So the last thing I want to show you is the finances. Of course, we've potentially got a centre-half coming in. But other than that, the wage budget's maxed out now. No transfer budget left. I don't think our director of football can do much. Unless he can find a connection for a loan deal, perhaps. Maybe someone who doesn't need any wage contribution. That's possibly the only way we could get another player in now. But of course, as we mentioned at the start of the episode, we've got absolutely no say in that. I'm going to quickly look at the staffing screen just to show you where we stand at the moment. A pretty strong lineup now we've got. But unfortunately... Unfortunately, there are still a couple of places. Two in the recruitment team, which I think is probably holding things up. Both of those are scouting roles to improve. And we've also got space for a coach as well. But again, we can't have any say in that. We're reliant on our director of football to do the business. And so far, although he's done good work when he has moved, he has been a little bit slow in doing so. Reese Kavanagh, of course, has been our saviour though. So we've got to go and thank him for that one. And then let's go and look at the schedule to see when we'll next be back. And hopefully we'll have a youth intake soon too. That's the one last thing we'll go and look at actually, just so I can show you the pre-youth intake report. Let's see what we've got on here. It said this is a terrific group of players coming through, has the potential to be a golden generation. So the next episode could be a very exciting one, and we could have a season that makes us want to stay at Kettering. I'm hoping there might be a couple that are first team ready. We really do need to strengthen the squad. And if we've got good youngsters, they'll get a chance off the bench, as we've only got about 18 or 19 players. There's a lot of wingers, one good striker apparently, and at least one good winger and centre half too. So I can't wait to get going with that one, though I do ask you to bear one thing in mind. Thurland has three for judging ability and potential, so he could be completely wrong in this instance. But let's get back to the schedule to see when the next episode will be, and which game we're planning to show in it. I think Kidderminster are top at the moment, so we should probably test ourselves in that one. I think that was coming up at the start of March. Six more games off camera, then we'll come back for Kidderminster at the start of March, and then one more near the end of the season. So if you did enjoy this episode and that tough performance against Kettering, please do put a thumbs up on the video. Of course, it brought us back down to earth after a good run and of course it showed how dependent we are on Reese Kavanagh. Let me know in the comments how you think we're getting on and what we can perhaps do to improve the tactic. So earlier in the season at one all, I would have gone to a midfield three and more defensive, but I fancied our chances of winning here and maybe I've got to try and scrap that confidence. Maybe not judge my decisions based on how our form is on the pitch, just been pragmatic the whole way through. It's not my usual approach, but it seems to be needed here. So I think we will try and return to that mindset. Of course, in the emotion of the game, it's much easier said than done. And unfortunately, it has cost us today. And as a result, I'll probably learn from it and improve, though I can't promise I won't revert to type in the future. Subscribe to the channel for daily FM20 content from my two long-term stories. We'll be back tomorrow with Dorkin Wanderers and then the head coach again in two days' time. The two long-term series rotating each day all the way through to Christmas week where we'll have our usual special mini-series. I've got something a bit different planned this year so I hope you'll come and join me for that. But a massive thanks for watching this one and your continued support with the series as always. I really do appreciate it. And I hope to see you next time for another important episode as we test ourselves against the top side in a league and look forward to what our head of youth development says will be a golden generation.